think in riding, as in life, like being patient with horses, with people, with yourself is really important. I think this sport especially is, it's very easy to get discouraged really fast. And I think if you don't have a strong sense of self, but some patience with yourself to make mistakes, that's, you're not gonna make it in the sport very long because this sport can really knock you down. Because I worked for Joe Farr just when I was a junior and he always told me when I was growing up, he said, you have to make yourself irreplaceable anywhere you want to go. So I've always tried to do that by being the person in the barn that works really hard, that doesn't mind to come early, stay late, I'll ride, I've groomed, braid horses, kind of do whatever it is to make not only the people who are my employers, my boss know that I work hard, but also the team that I work around. Because I think any professional will tell you that it's the team that makes them successful. So to have people, you know, your barn manager, the people that you ride with grooms, know that you are working as hard as they are, it makes everyone want to help you also. It sounds corny, but there's a book called This Is Water by David Foster Wallace. Everyone should read it, which I told Maggie that for, which uh, I read all the time, which is kind of like my Bible, which is just, it's about like being aware, having, like not letting your default setting just be that you make snap judgments of people, of situations, you never don't know anybody's backstory. It's the same thing with horses. Like we get these horses, horses don't know what they cost. They don't know what they're supposed to do. You can horse, get a horse that was won the gold medal the year before. The horse doesn't know that it's supposed to jump a clear on the first day you get on it. I just think it's something I have to work at every day myself to be patient and to know there's a means to the end. Consistency for me is a short-term and long-term goal. I've had some nice success for my career, but it's a little bit sporadic, as I think happens in the beginning of your career. I had a little bit of a late start, so I would like to be a little farther ahead than I am now, but I would, my dream goal would be a consistent competitor at the top of the sport, like that, that you know, when you look at them in the start list, think, oh, they have a good chance of jumping clear, or if you're on a team, everyone thinks, oh yeah, that's a good person, we have a team that's a solid, a solid rider, a solid combination, and just, you know, win a gold medal at the end, but. <laughs> No one's gonna buy you a horse or support you because they think they're intimidated by you from being mean. Be nice, make people like you. I mean, I'd much rather talk to a nice person than a mean person. Any top rider in the sport, people think that someone might just buy them a horse because they're the best rider. Riding is not all of it. Like, riding is not just what it takes. Missy Clark told me that when I for her. She said, just being a good rider is not good enough. People have to like you, and the amount of money that horses cost these days, people have to really like you to buy you a couple of good Grand Prix horses. And I see, think you see any top rider in the sport, they have a relationship with their owners, their sponsors, where those people want to go to dinner with them and talk to them and have them train their kid or whatever it is. Comparing myself to other riders, other people in the sport, that's something I've always struggled with because I've always wanted to jump bigger than I was or have one of those horses. So that's something I have to really work at, even in the warm-up ring, not watch someone else jump and not think, oh, their horse jumped me so well, or wow, their position's so good, whatever it is. I, little things get in my head and I have to let not, myself not think about that. I mean, even big things, I'm a big guy. Like, I am not built to ride horses. I don't look like the other Grand Prix riders in the ring. That's something that is, I have to work at all the time. I can work better at it, but that's something that I can easily, you can walk around and think like, God, my poor horse, look at these skinny guys walking around weighing 100 pounds, and here I am like left tackle going into the ring of these horses. Like, you gotta put that stuff out of your mind. At some point, that's gonna, you might be able to push that stuff away for a while, but it's gonna bite you in the end. So I think everyone's different. For me, I concentrate on riding properly, riding well, training my horses well, and letting the chips fall where they may. I was not a super, super talented junior rider, so that's always stuck in me a little bit that I don't feel, I never feel like I'm going in the ring like I'm the best rider in this class. I work with McLean a lot, and McLean says to me, he said to me before, you know, go in the ring, and when he goes in the ring, he takes a breath before the buzzer goes and says to himself, I can win this class. And he said, you should do that too, which I will do, but I don't feel that going in the ring, and maybe I need, I something I need to work on, but I don't walk in the ring thinking like, this is my class. I walk in the ring thinking like, I'm gonna try to ride really well and like, good boy, hope you do it. And let's see what we can do. So I think that pushes me always to be a little better. I feel like I'm always the underdog and it kind of keeps me really hungry. 
getting qualified for World Cup finals. Um, that was a big goal of mine, and I felt that at that point in my career, this was last season, I was at a point where I'd, got, I'd gone through the couple seasons of just getting in the Grand Prix ring and just going around. And I felt like I was at a point where I could set a goal for myself. I had a great horse, H.H. Copen van der Broeij. And I thought if I really laid out a plan to do the proper show to get qualified, I could make it. And it, we did it. I was really serious about that horse's fitness and his program with the vet and the ferry and making sure everything was set for him to peak that week. I rode terribly at World Cup Finals. It was the worst week ever, but it was really, I was really proud that I could, at this point in my career, make a plan, set up my horse correctly, and get to it, which gave me confidence going forward. If I do it one day get a chance to be in a championship or something like that, I have that experience. I was gonna say, Maggie's quotes that she said in her last video, where she was like, don't give someone a chance to think that you're lazy, but I was like, quote, Quentin Judge. <laughs> Copyright, me.